Hey everybody, it's Anna. Time for the Wednesday card in this week's tarot story. Today we have our second major arcana card for the week, and it is the Hermit Reversed. So the Hermit is um, the life lesson, which tells us there are times we need to step away from the influence of others, their expectations, their noise, their drama, kind of step away and move to a place of solitude in order to evoke our wisdom, in order to get in touch with what our own calling is telling us. So we actually have the image of this, this little man, this old man, kind of like a wizard energy. He's got his lantern. He's walking into the wilderness. He's leaving behind the distractions of the world because he knows there is something he needs to evoke. So the lesson of the hermit, I think, is about being able to discern when something is ready to come up and taking the time, taking it seriously, taking the time and energy to, to do whatever you have to do to make space for it to, for it to surface. But this one came to us reversed. And that reminds me always that there are two movements to the hermit. There is the moving away from the world in order to invoke the blessing. But then there's a return to the world with the blessing in hand. So often when I see the reversal, it tells me it is time to come back to the world. It is time to bring the blessing into the world. And I think that's an important important um awareness to have around the hermit. Often we hear the word hermit, we think of someone who's totally isolated, living in the woods, kind of a grouchy old curmudgeon that doesn't talk to people. That's not this hermit. This hermit just knows is is the wise man. It's the he's the wizard. And he knows how to evoke magic, knows when it's time, but he does it not for his own enlightenment only, but to bring back to the world. And I think this card really helps in concert with the other two cards this week. We had the Nine of Pentacles reversed, we had Judgment reversed, which both speak about us getting close to the end of something, getting close to a new life, new expansion, completing a work, but we're pausing a little. And um, I think that could speak to, to, this could speak to why we might be doing that. Because I think of the hermit as kind of being on his own, maybe in a cave or in the forest. It's probably, a, it's a very lovely experience. Anyone who's done a hermit experience and enjoys it, it's very nice to be in your own magic, in your own place, just sort of freed up from the world. And, um, and it can become addicting. Like you might enjoy it so much, you forget that the reason you're doing it is to serve the world. So the reverse hermit reminds you, you're only called into gift um, you're called into gift for your own well-being. It's fun to have gift. It's fun to be in flow, but you're doing it for the sake of the world as well. So if you fail to come back to the world, it, like in the Nine of Pentacles reverse, if you fail to cross the line, if you fail to evoke the total abundance, if you fail in the resurrection, um, in judgment reverse, which I connect to resurrection, if you fail to step into new life, Sure, you'll stay in the familiar path for a while and it might feel comfy and cozy for a while, but eventually it gets stale and stagnant because that is not the purpose of our walk on this planet. It is not for us to just keep our stuff to ourselves and stay hidden in a cave. Our purpose is to bring it to the world. It is a little scary sometimes. And that can be part of what the hermit is, uh, the hermit energy reversed is about here. Not only is it time to return, but we might be a little blocked on the return. Because things do change when you return to the world with the gift, right? That's why we have to hold the gift with open hands. We're offering it to the world. We give it to the world. We let it go. We don't have an agenda for how that gift now functions in the world. That can be very tricky. We want to release any attachments. So it doesn't matter if it fails, it succeeds. None of those things even have any have any meaning in the spiritual journey because the gift will do what it's meant to do. And our job was just to bring it to the world and let it go. So consider that, so we might want to consider why we've been slowing down is in part because we've been enjoying the solitude. We've been enjoying the fun of the creative process and having it to ourselves. Um, and we might want to hold on to that for a little bit longer. But if you hold on to it too long, for one thing, um, you could lose momentum and it's difficult to get things into the world without momentum, but also um, you will get stagnant and it will stop being fun. And you'll you'll become so attached to the, the thing you've created that you don't have room to release it or to make room for something even more brilliant and amazing. So, so once again, I think the lesson keeps coming back is, is ponder why you're holding on to something work on releasing it, work on giving it back, giving it to the world, um, making space for your next thing you're going to create. You can't receive more stuff if you don't let go of what you've already got. So that includes our creative projects and ventures. If you don't complete it, you don't have room for something new. That's our Wednesday card. See you tomorrow for our next one. Bye.